Now getting into some player spotlights for guys who have really stood out to me this season. First, starting off with Colin Sexton. I have to just be completely honest. I was 100% completely wrong about Colin Sexton. And that this is what is important about being a podcaster and having a platform. You got to admit when you're wrong and you got to just accept that and move on from it. I, at the beginning of the season, said Colin Sexton was an empty stats guy. I said I would take Darius Garland over them. And I said the Cleveland Cavaliers should have traded Colin Sexton. And I've, I stood on that. I felt pretty confident about that. But Colin Sexton has completely moved, uh, proved me wrong. And first, getting into why I thought he was an empty stats guy, it's not even that the Cavs were just losing games because I think that argument of just you're on a losing team and putting up numbers and then you're immediately an empty stats guy, I think that's stupid. I've never called Trey Young an empty stats guy. I've never called Devin Booker an empty stats guy. Uh, the thing that made me more think that Colin was an empty stats guy was that he would always have, like, uh, a good first half of the season, but it wasn't special. He was just a solid player, uh, and especially in his uh, second season, he he was cool. He didn't really take the leap that we all uh, would hope he did. And then in the second half of the season, where teams are starting to tank, their team is starting to tank as well. They don't really care as much. A lot of teams are loosening up as more guys are just playing for seeding than anything. He would put up crazy numbers. He would be shooting the three ball super well, and he'd go on like a hot streak, and everybody would say he needs to get more recognition. Recognition. I, I just always thought that was kind of kind of fake and uh, that those numbers were empty. But now this season, at the beginning of the season, with the Cleveland Cavaliers winning games, Colin Sexton has been absolutely incredible and has been one of the best players in the league as a whole. Colin Sexton has been out of this world, and I got to give him so much credit for proving me wrong. Now, do I think some of this stuff is going to cool down? Absolutely. Shooting 50% from three on 4.7 attempts per game when you're not like an amazing shooter, you're just a pretty good shooter, is, is very hard to keep sustainable. 27 points. I think he could be a very high uh, volume scorer, but I don't think 27 points is super realistic because that's like the elite of the elite scores. But I still think he could be like a 25 point per game scorer, and this is why he's his game as a whole has just improved so much. Like you can tell, he put in the work in the off season. Going into the league, I was concerned about his shooting. I thought it was something that could definitely develop. Uh, but I thought he was a guy who uh, was never going to be like a great shooter by any means. But he's clearly worked super hard to become a very good shooter. Now, in his rookie season, he shot 40%. Uh, it was only on 3.6 attempts per game, and it was, again, the thing of him shooting really well at the end of the year, but not shooting super great at the beginning of this season, and then he kind of did the same thing his second year, but now he's starting off guns blazing. Uh, his ability to hit them off the dribble is just so impressive now, especially if you watch that Brooklyn Nets game. That was that was one of the most incredible performances I've ever seen. Uh, in that second overtime, he absolutely just took over his ability to hit these tough contested shots off the dribble step back sidesteps are so impressive and that's what truly makes like an elite scorer in this league now that's what allowed Jason Tatum to take the next step into being a superstar level player is the ability to hit those tough off the dribble threes that very uh that very few players can hit and now that Colin Sexton is able to he's really put himself in the upper echelon of players of now we need to talk about Colin Sexton being in the same vein as like Shea Gilgis Alexander, Trey Young. He like Colin Sexton has improved so much and he's putting himself into these conversations of being one of the better young guards in the league. He is a very good mid range shooter as well. I feel like he gets a lot of his production there. Uh, he's just silky smooth out of the pick and roll, has a super nice handle, and has just gotten so good at hitting difficult and challenging shots. Uh, he's pretty good at the rim as well. Nothing super special there. Uh, that's more limited just due to him being a 6'1, 190 pound guy, but he, with his good handle, with his ability out of the pick and roll, and with him being as fast as he is he still can get to the basket and finish at a pretty good rate he's gone to the line 4.9 times per game which i always love to see people get into the line more and more every year um 
playmaking isn't great and that's the thing that's criticized most about him but at this point in his career and at this point with the construction of the Cleveland Cavaliers roster with Darius Garland taking a taking a step as a playmaker I don't really care about him not being a great playmaker like obviously you want every player to be the best player that they can be and you'd love for Colin Sexton to be an awesome playmaker but if that's just not who he is and that's not his role then he shouldn't have to be forced into trying to be a playmaker. If he is a shooting guard, even though you don't really like seeing a 6'1 shooting guard, you just have to play him in the role that uh, fits him the most, which is an electric and explosive score. And that's what the Cleveland Cavaliers have done this season. Like Darius Garland has still been a good score. He's been awesome this year as well, but he's taken on more of the responsibility of being the main playmaker and it works. And then when you got guys around him who can defend very well, because he isn't a great defender by any means, like he puts an effort, but he's just pretty small and sometimes the effort cannot be there. Uh, when you put good defenders and just big guys who can rebound the ball very well you put a Larry Nance who's one of the best role players in the league you draft an Isaac Okoro who fits perfectly alongside Colin Sexton as a guy who doesn't need the ball at all on the offensive side of the ball is a good playmaker and then is one of the best wing defenders I feel like we've seen in a long long time come out of the draft I think he's that special on the defensive side of the ball and then you trade for Jared Allen a guy who can catch lobs a guy who can set hard screens and a guy who can rebound and protect the rim the Cleveland Cavaliers are building around this duo of Carl of Darius Garland and Colin Sexton and fitting their needs, putting guys around him, uh, around them who uh, fit their strengths and then help out their weaknesses. I really, really like what the call, uh, what the Cleveland Cavaliers are building. And I really, really am just so impressed by how Colin Sexton has proved me wrong and how well he's performing this season. He is an all-star caliber player. And honestly, if he didn't sustain the injury that he did, he'd probably be a lock for me at this point in the season with, with how good that he's been playing. His scoring has just been absolutely out of this world. I'm really excited to see him play uh, against the Nets again tonight because I, I wasn't uh, super closely watching that game. I watched it when it got into overtime time but the Celtics and the Mavericks were on so I was watching those two games very closely but when it came to overtime I watched that and I guess I watched at a good time because that man Colin Sexton just completely took over and dragged the Cleveland Cavaliers to a win he's stepped up and has improved so much and he's really given the Cleveland Cavaliers a clear direction now like I felt for a couple of years they were pretty directionless I felt like they were just going to keep losing keeping a pretty awful team to be honest but now they have this youth movement where they have their two guards of the future they have a wing of the future and they have their center of the future if they get a four that they can rely on going into the future you have a starting lineup of all guys that i expect to be good players going forward and you have a clear direction where you're going that you're going in but you still have good veterans as well you got a guy like shetty osman who isn't super old isn't super young either it's just kind of in the middle and he's been solid this year again you have larry nance who I, i'm absolutely in love with larry nance as a player i just think he's such a good role player he's been awesome as a defender this year he's just been incredible i'm i'm really really happy with what the cleveland cavaliers are building they're looking like a competent team again and i honestly would not be surprised at all if they were a playoff or a play-in team this year uh and that's because colin sexton has been so good and I think if he can will them into being like a playoff or playing team we really need to start talking about Colin Sexton in the upper echelon of these younger guards like there's he's closing the gap very very quickly and it's not even like he just has this crazy high usage like he has the same usage that he did last year he's playing more minutes but it's not like he's just dominating the ball he has a 26.4 percent usage which you'd expect out of a high volume scorer who is a very good ball handler and especially with him being a guard he's just improved and is playing so much better than i think anyone could have expected and especially as as someone who thought he was an empty stats guy than I could have expected. So all the credit in, in to the world uh, for Colin Sexton. He's been absolutely incredible this season for the Cleveland Cavaliers.